All right, what's going on, guys? Steel Twins coming back at you with some week predictions. Yeah, we are the Steel Twins coming at you with some more week five picks, at, or week six, actually, because we are now on a bye week, thankfully, for our beloved Pittsburgh Steelers. And at this point, I think our guest wants a bye week after the the hurtful loss he's literally suffering live right now. Like, we are recording this during the game. Shout out to D. Carey, man. A lo- uh, I, I feel you, man. A, lo- a long-term uh, Discord member, channel supporter. We appreciate him for all that. And, uh, yeah, he's a Cowboys fan. So uh, how are you feeling right now, my man? So much pain and agony. <laughs> so much pain. Hey, I feel you. I feel you. You know, we, we've, we've been through some blowouts ourselves this year. So join the club. Join the club. But uh, we got week six picks. Uh, you guys finished week six, but to open week six, we got uh, AFC West matchup. We had the Denver Broncos. Let's ride. Heading to Arrow, uh, Arrowhead. And uh, Kansas City, who you got for this one? Chiefs by 10. Yeah. Chief- uh, like 24 to 14. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 24 points only for Kansas City. That's it? And Arrowhead? I feel like they're going to play around. And then they're going to play away at that. End. Okay, that's fair. I mean, De- Denver can uh, bring a little competition if they actually desire to. But, uh, no, nah, Kansas City's winning this one. You can't bet against them. And Denver's just – it's looking like everything they traded for is not uh, paying off. So, Kansas City, definitely – this is honestly a lock of the week candidate already. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, Kansas City by a long shot. I mean, Denver just failed against the Jets and Zach Wilson. And Denver, too. So, now they got to go on the road to Kansas City, who are riding a, a wave of momentum. Yep. Yeah, Kansas City for sure. Uh, Sunday games. We have the Baltimore Ravens at the Tennessee Titans. What you pick for this one? Ravens over the Titans, seventeen fourteen. Most scoring game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, these are two uh, run heavy teams traditionally. Uh, these are both two teams. I just don't know if they're good or bad. I can't trust either. Uh, this is also a London game, by the way. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll go Baltimore. They'll get the rebound. Baltimore, I suppose. I just can't trust Tennessee. No, I mean, I mean, you can't trust both teams in general. And both teams are looking for bounce back wins for sure after Tennessee, despite a, a solid performance from uh, DeAndre Hopkins and even Tannehill to a degree. You know, they did lose to Indianapolis. And uh, Baltimore, of course, lost to the Steelers and everything. But I got to go with Baltimore. Uh, when it comes to London for Baltimore, usually they, they, they go there and they, you know, perform all hands on deck and everything, if you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. I can see Baltimore getting a win over Tennessee. Next game, we got the Commanders at the Falcons. God, this is the battle of the mid here. What's your prediction? Dak Prescott just threw his interception. D- anyway. Real- Dak just threw his third pick as we're recording. Yes. Oh, my God. Is he even trying? I don't know at this point. Come on, Ayuk, I need a touchdown, man. I need a touchdown. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Commanders and Falcons, what's your prediction? I'm going to go with the Falcons. Falcons. I like what I saw from Desmond Ritter this week. Yeah. I'm, again, For like 28 to 24. Okay, yeah, I can see it kind of going in that level. You wouldn't, you wouldn't expect a high-scoring matchup between these two teams, but they also struggle defensively. So I could see their young guys start to – to go around a little bit. We're going to see Sam Howe versus Desmond Ritter, two quarterbacks from last year's class ballot out here. Um, I I don't know on this one, man. I guess I'll go Washington. I, I think they have a little more fight to them. Maybe I'm underestimating Atlanta, but you can just tell that their head coach is on his way out. Give me Washington. I don't know, man. This is a matchup that could uh, honestly come down to the wire, be very close. Uh for me, for this matchup, I think I'm gonna go with the home team. I'm gonna go with Atlanta. Surprisingly, at least in you know, for me, they're three and two. You know, they got a a solid win this past week, and uh, you, you know, despite you know how they may look and how Ritter may look, almost every game, you know, it's been very edgy and very close. And mm-hmm. I can see this matchup kind of being uh, a similar one to that to, to to the previous matchups. But I think Atlanta can pull it off. Okay. So I got Atlanta here. Next matchup, we got the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. This is an AFC North battle. What's your prediction? Jesus. Jefferson Jefferson did injure his hamstring. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. Jefferson plays. um, It could be like, I'm taking the Vikings. My score of like 23 to 21. Yeah. Uh, see, with the Vikings, I'm not entirely sure myself because, I mean, they only have one win on the season. They barely won versus the Panthers. 
Uh, at least Chicago, uh, every now and then they want to show off their potential. Justice or Justin Fields wants to show his potential. DJ Moore is coming off a uh, a career high game, so they're going to have a little momentum on their side. This is this is a battle between two one and four teams, so it really matters uh, who makes the first stop on defense, in my opinion. And in that case, it it might it might be Minnesota. You know what? Give me Chicago. Give me Chicago. Yeah. You know, you know, I consider Minnesota to be the uh, the more stacked team with arguably uh, the better talent. But at, just at the moment and so far throughout this year, especially recently, Chicago's just kind of been the team that's kind of clicking more and gelling together and, you know, starting to strike more to Minnesota. And I think that continues to be the case with Chicago at home, at Soldier Field against an NFC North rival. And I think Chicago does get a win. I think they get their second straight win. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in Minnesota, but they're going to need a win back at some point. But yeah. I don't know if it's against Chicago. Next matchup, this should be a really good one. We got the Seahawks at the Bengals, man. Jamar Chase coming off three touchdowns. So what's your prediction here? Bengals played like how they played today. I'm taking the Bengals. Yeah. Score, uh, both offenses are good. So let's say like 27 27- 24. Yeah, I mean, th- this definitely has the making of being another shootout type of battle. If Burrow and Chase want to replicate what they did, the, the question is, can they? Against Seattle, they they sure can. I mean, they've they've they're not the best defense in the world. So if Burrow is more healthy, then they should be able to cook. Although Seattle is coming off three straight wins and I believe a bye, mm-hmm. so Seattle has momentum on the side, but they're also on the road. I don't know about Cincinnati yet. I think one good game isn't going to uh, buy a lot of people back yet. So I'm going. I'm going Seattle here. Yeah, and granted, you know it was against Arizona. Not to take anything away from Arizona or say that they're an overall bad team, but they're not the greatest, obviously, and they couldn't slow down Jamar Chase one bit. And uh, Cincinnati seems to be finally getting something going with Burrow and, and Chase. They should be getting T Higgins back and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it seems like they're. Starting to get a little bit of momentum on on offense. As for defense, you know they still got to click there with the uh, the new guys that they they brought in and the uh, the other rookies, of course. Uh, Seattle, Seattle, you know Geno's looking, you know, not too bad after getting that contract extension. The running game's real good with Kenneth Walker and the receivers. You guys already know in the defense, but <sighs> see, it's it, it's tough because again, this is another matchup that could really go either way, but. I think I think somehow, some way, and I don't really want to say it, but I think Cincinnati will pull off the victory. It's possible. It is very possible. And Cincinnati, again, they're getting that momentum, like I stated. I think they continue that. I'm not buying back on the Bengals train just yet. Just the, not not just yet. No, I'm not saying that I am, but I can see Cincinnati kind of getting two straight victories right here. Okay. So give me Cincinnati. Next game, uh, we have the San Francisco 49ers at the Cleveland Browns. I don't think I have to ask you this question. As a victim of the 49ers, you and us both being blown out by arguably the best team in the NFL. What's your prediction? Absolutely not. San Francisco 49ers by 90. God damn. San Francisco 49ers, 90-0. 90-0. Oh, I've seen enough. They might hit 70, man. The Dolphins might, uh, you know, they might uh, might eat their heart out on this one. Uh, now, Cleveland's defense is I, but against top competition, against San Fran, they ain't going to hold much. I think Garrett versus Trent Williams is going to be a fun battle, but that's it. San Francisco's winning this. This this is another lock of the week argument. But So, San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, Cleveland's looked solid thus far to begin the season, but this is a true challenge against San Francisco. Uh, more than likely, and arguably the best team in the NFL. Uh, good luck, Cleveland, seriously. From experience, I mean, best of luck to you. Yeah, so, give me San Francisco. We have another blowout waiting to happen. We got the Carolina Panthers at the Miami Dolphins. Do I have to ask you this question, good sir? Dolphins by 28. Yeah. I mean, 42 to, uh, can't do that. 42 to 14. Okay. See, the thing with C- Carolina didn't have a win yet. No. They don't have a win yet, and they're going up against one of the highest scoring offenses. And Bryce Young is looking terrible. I know he doesn't have nobody or anything out there, but good God, bro, they just suck. They just suck. They're about to have back-to-back number one overall picks if they don't start getting some dubs. But it ain't going to be this week against Miami in Miami. Miami's winning this. No, Miami's my lock of the week. Enough said. Enough said. Sorry, Carolina, but good luck. Uh, At least we have an intriguing one here. 
Uh, we have an AC South battle. We have Indianapolis Colts at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hopefully, Anthony Richardson is healthy because that's going to be a fun battle. Otherwise, I guess we'll get more of the Minshew mania running wild over there. But what's your prediction on this one? Duval. Of course. Come on. You're going Jags. 20, 20, 29 to 27. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's an AFC South battle. These are always fun. Uh, they can go either way, truthfully. That's how competitive that, that division is. And you're talking two young teams. Jacksonville's really starting to showcase their potential. They're starting to get going after, uh, you know, what they showed last year. Yeah, give me Jacksonville back at home after being uh, in London the past two weeks. That might be just what they needed to get so something really going for their season. I think they're going to start, uh, I don't want to say skyrocketing, but they're going to start floating up to where they should be. Uh, yeah, give me Jacksonville. But definitely Richardson and the Colts are going to keep this close. Yeah, without a doubt. With this being a divisional matchup, you know, the Colts got some momentum. You know, Richardson's looking real nice. They're, they, they, they're getting Jonathan Taylor back, although Zach Moss seems to be carrying the load with the running game pretty solidly. Actually, a lot better than I think a lot of people anticipated. Jacksonville, you know, they came off a big win the in London against Buffalo. They got a hell of a lot of momentum, but I think Jacksonville just has – uh, the better talent, the better team, the better coaching at the moment, and better execution. Yeah. And it's in Jacksonville, so give me the Jaguars. Next game, we have the New Orleans Saints at the Houston Texans. Man, what's your prediction on this one? This should be kind of interesting. This, this is a hard one. Yeah. Mm, I'm going to take the Texans for uh, 21 to 18. Yeah, see, I agree with you. This is tough to predict because New Orleans just shot out uh, New England. They literally forced Mac Jones to get benched. Mm -hmm. And Houston, after beating the shit out of us, they lost this past week. It was in close fashion, but they lost. To Atlanta. To Atlanta. Uh, New Orleans, man, like they're just one of those teams where I thought they'd show a lot more potential by now. And maybe against the, 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 the Patriots is what they needed to do. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to agree with D-Carry. I'm, I'm going to go Texans, man. I'm, a, I'm still a little bit on their hype train, and I don't know if New Orleans can stay consistent enough because uh, they haven't shown that yet. So give me Houston. I got to agree with him. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the, the game against the Patriots uh, this past week with the Saints, you know, it could finally be the game where they finally start clicking and Derek Carr, you know, finally starts playing a little bit better, you know, has better games, better execution with the, with the amount of targets he has and everything. But I don't know. Houston just has in a in, in a developmental year, CJ Stroud's rookie year and everything. You know they're, they're showing a lot of promise already. You know Houston fans should definitely be really excited with D'Amico Ryan's as head coach, Stroud as their quarterback, all the talent surrounding him, and the guys that they're adding to the defense too. You know Houston is just slowly but surely growing, and I think that continues to be the case. And I think they get another win here this week. Give me Houston. Yeah, I got. I think we all agree on that one. Uh, next game, no one really cares for this. I guess uh, Josh McDaniels and uh, Bill Belichick is the only saving grace for this matchup. We have New England at Las Vegas. Patriots versus Raiders. What's your prediction, man? Jesus. <laughs> Patriots score of eight to... Five. Eight to five. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, <laughs> that bad, huh? Dude, well, dude, they can't score. They cannot score to save their life. Peter rushes in. Were they one and four? This yeah. is one of the one of Belichick's worst starts. In fact, he's coming off a loss where he allowed the most points at a home game in his entire coaching career. Mm -hmm. Like it's bad. The Patriots are that bad. The Raiders aren't any better. They're definitely not uh, coached well at all. But I'm going Raiders. I think Adams has another great game, and New England has no offense, zero. They might be worse than ours, and that's that's terrible. That's arguable. You can't get lower than Matt Cannon. That's very arguable. Ours. I mean, we haven't benched a quarterback yet. And I don't think we will. But uh, yeah, Mac Jones is just not good. Bailey Zapp is maybe an improvement, but that's you know yet to be determined. Man, they gonna know, make a, they gonna make a trade for Caleb. Uh, they're going to have to make a move, but as far as this week goes, this would be the type of game where Josh McDaniels completely shits the bed. Really? Yeah. 
Ooh. I'm going upset, quote unquote. I'm going New England. Uh, Josh McDaniel just when it comes to these type of games, even when it's against somebody he's familiar with for the majority of his coaching career, he just doesn't execute. He doesn't show up. You okay, know, against Belichick. I mean, these guys know each other well, but yeah, but I, I, Josh McDaniel's is just not good as a head coach. No, he's not. I don't think anybody in Raiders fans should not trust him. They want the guy fired, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Give me New England. Okay, I'm being serious. Next game, we have, we have another interesting one here. I think this is an AFC West battle. We have the Arizona Cardinals at the Los Angeles Rams. This should be really good. Potential high-scoring matchup here. What's your prediction? Rams, but it's a close game. Like 27 to 26. Yeah. Uh, the thing with the Cardinals is they're 1-4. Uh, that one being against your Cowboys. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they show a little more fight than their record shows. I mean, they're not good in any fashion. Let's, let, let's get that clear. But they, they're a little more competitive than you would think. Uh, Rams coming off a loss versus the Eagles. I mean, Rams aren't anything crazy. They have a great offense once they start getting going. Otherwise, their defense is a, a liability. But I'm still going the Rams. I agree with you in you your prediction. But this is going to be close. But the Rams still win. The Rams get a win back, and they get some momentum as they uh, – they're about to host us in week seven. Yeah, I agree. I think the Rams do get the win here at home, but I do think I have to agree this will be very close. Arizona is showing a lot of fight with uh, the uh, type of talent that they have. You know, not, not, not that it's bad. It's just not complete. It's not there. But, you know, Dobbs is looking. You know, he's being very serviceable. You know, he's a fighter. He's a hard football player. James Conner went healthy. You know, he knows how to run the football. Marquise Brown seems to be executing – and everything like that with Dobbs, you know, you know they, they they show fight, they show heart, but they just can't close it out with a win completely. And I don't think they do it this week against Los Angeles. So I got to go with the Rams here. Yeah, agreed. Uh, next game, we got the Eagles at the Jets. This is weird. What's your prediction? It's going to be like, Jesus Christ. It's going to be like um, 20, 28 to the Eagles are going to keep them in the game, okay. but it will be domination. You don't get the score work. Right. I mean, I get the Jets this, man. I mean, they're coming off a good win versus the Broncos. They almost beat the, the Chiefs, so they're – I don't know what's going on with them now, but they're a little more competitive under Zach Wilson than they've ever been. So maybe they keep this close against the Eagles. The Eagles haven't been that dominating, uh, but – I, I'm still going Eagles because they're the better team. You can't ever go with the Jets confidently. No. Ever. The, I don't know if the Jets are going to keep this close, but all I know is the Eagles are going to win. So, Eagles easily. Yeah. Now, I'll say this. The past two weeks against the Chiefs and the Broncos, I'm not saying Zach Wilson is improving or he's good now because he's not. He's not. But he has been playing better football. I, I don't know how long that continues, but he has been playing a little bit better at quarterback. But, but going a, against I, Philadelphia, though, granted their defense hasn't been as locked down or as dominant as last year, of course, considering how many people they lost. You know, it still isn't going to be enough for Zach Wilson and company to 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 even get a win, even at home. I got to go Philadelphia here. They're just too dominant, especially on offense right now. If Brees Hall can't get anything going, Zach Wilson is fucked. Pretty, is that? pretty much. Pretty much. Next game, we got the Detroit Lions at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't know why. This looks like an intriguing matchup. But what's your prediction? I'm going to Tampa Bay by score of only because I knew who the other team was. So. You're going Tampa 19. Bay over Detroit? Oh, okay, no, no, it's right long. <laughs> but it's still going to be a close game. So I'm going to say, like, 24-21. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, 10 base, 3-1, and one, but Detroit's looking hot. Detroit's looking like they're having fun out there, man. They're just utilizing all their weapons. Montgomery is, 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 is balling right now in their backfield. Once Gibbs gets back and they actually want to use him. Then... If, if they want to use him. Yeah, I know, but... Yeah, I'll go Detroit, but this might be close, man. I wouldn't sleep on Tampa Bay to have a defensive uh, effort here. But Detroit's going to win. Detroit, like I said, is just real hot right now. 4-1. and one. I mean, they arguably should have beat the Seahawks week two. They, they could be undefeated right now. Yeah, very well so. Detroit is definitely living up to the hype, and uh, there's no reason to jump off that, that train right now. So D Detroit. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. You know, Detroit's on fire right now. 
You know, they're hitting on all cylinders. Their rookies especially are hitting on all cylinders. Almost every single one of their draft class has just been uh, a big impact early this year. You know, you can only imagine what they can do, you know, further down their careers. Just think of their past two drafts. Yeah, really, really. And they got Jameson Williams back, you know, when they get him involved more consistently. I mean, that's just more, more, more uh, effective progress for their offense really yep. although Tampa Bay and, and Baker Mayfield you know they're 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 doing solid thus far they're doing really good but I think for this matchup even in Tampa Bay I think it really depends on what type of Baker Mayfield you're really going to get in that matchup and it's kind of undetermined almost every week I just get a sense Baker's about to hit that uh Fitzpatrick type train where he looks good the first couple weeks and then the real guy comes out and it just might very well be against Detroit you know Detroit's definitely got some names on defense they got some guys, you know, that can make plays and execute. And I think Detroit gets a win here. Yeah. Sunday night, uh, we have a uh, blowout waiting to happen unless Josh Allen just wants to start th- throwing the football away, uh, which I don't see happening. It's New York versus New York. It's New York versus the Buffalo Bills, the Giants versus Bills. What's your prediction? Mm. Bills by score of 38 mm. to. Twenty-three. Okay, you think they score twenty-three? Yeah, they got like a. They'll get like a touchdown, like the first drive out of five. Okay, I could. I mean, it's it's possible if, if they get Saquon back, they might have a fighting chance because Buffalo can't stop the run. But uh, you gotta go Buffalo here. New York sucks. I'm sure you, as a Cowboys fan, are loving what's happening in New York. Hmm. So uh, enjoy that. Uh, on Sunday, I, why why do the Giants keep getting Sunday night games? They've lost every primetime game they've been in. It's torturous having to watch them. Well, you gotta think, this, you know, with how how they did. I don't know how they did it last year, but they did it. You know, they looked more uh, progressive and competitive last year. So you gotta think about that. But this year, I mean, yeah, it's just you have Daniel Jones. The, the well, maybe not this matchup because you got a neck injury. He got hurt. Well, who's their backup? Tyrod Taylor. Oh God! Might, you know, depending who you ask, it could be a, could be better, but how much better? Probably not much. Give me Buffalo. Just, I mean, yeah, Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, Buffalo. Buffalo and Buffalo. Yeah. And to close out week six, guys, we have an, uh, a, a highly anticipated matchup, at least in my opinion, because this could be one of those blowout battles here on Monday night. We got your Dallas Cowboys heading to Los Angeles. Do you guys get your win? Do you guys get a rebound win here? Yes, they're winning 27 to 17. Okay. They're gonna, it's going to be it's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. Okay. Uh I agree. I'm going with Dallas only cuz I can't trust Los Angeles. Uh I also can't trust Dallas. Um I just had this feeling they wouldn't show up against the Niners cuz they're they're not a legit team yet. And uh, there's no reason to believe that. But in this battle, I think they're going to get their win back. They're going to, you know, after a bad performance on prime time, they're going to want to be on the road and rebound nicely. That's just the type of team Dallas is. That's how Dak is. Uh, so, yeah, I think Dallas gets to win back. This is close. I think this is a, definitely a shootout matchup here. So give me Dallas. I'll even give you a score prediction, man. Let's go 31-26 Dallas. Okay. Okay, but, but you already stated, you know, you can't trust Los Angeles. They're kind of like Minnesota or even Baltimore at that. You know, they're just teams that, you know, have talent and can execute, but you just can't trust them to do it consistently no. and even pull off wins. You know, Los Angeles has all the talent in the world on offense and even defense. It's just nothing's clicking for them at all, even at home against Dallas, who, you know, Dallas is going to want a big rebound matchup on the road, big rebound win. I think Dallas does get it. This has all the makings to be a fun Monday night matchup, a, a shootout for sure, like you stated, Dan. But give me Dallas here. I think they get the win. Yeah, so we all agree Dallas gets to win back. D. Carey, man, we appreciate you for stepping away from that terrible game you're watching. We are, we we thank you for it, but we, we also apologize that you have to watch that. I'm sure that must suck as a Cowboys fan. So uh, we thank you, and definitely good luck to your Cowboys, like sincerely. Good luck to the Steelers. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And we appreciate you for coming on. Appreciate your time. And uh, good luck to your Cowboys next week. I know us Steelers fans are going to enjoy the bye week since we ain't got to worry about Matt Canner calling Jets sweeps all the time. 
or not being excited about the game winning touchdown because he clearly doesn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Maybe he'll be gone by this week, but he won't be. But regardless, go. Who, who are you kidding? Nobody. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody. So anyway, shout out to D. Carey for his time and his predictions this week. Always good to have him on. And uh, otherwise, you can join us in the peace out show. Appreciate you, man. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Peace. Peace.